CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. It's that time of year, swim season, but while you're having all that fun in the sun, we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need to keep you and your family safe. Good morning to you. Welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Vince Sims. Well, it is National Water Safety Month, and today we're highlighting information on infant toddler water safety survival skills. That's the reason we have our infant toddler mannequins here, and I'm joined now by Rita Goldberg, who is the CEO and founder of the British Swim School. Rita, thank you very much for being with us this oh, morning. Thank you for having me. All right, of course, we're talking about National Water Safety Month and British Swim School. Talk to us about why this month and knowledge is so important. Well, this month, features are the safety aspects of, of being around water and of course we're not just talking about pools we're talking about water in general but I do want to stress that this isn't just this month this is a year-round um, connection that everybody should have to the degrees of water safety and to be able to follow the rules. <laughs> and as we're talking about following the rules and this being a month that gets the attention shown on it, even though it's year round, you have a, a pledge for parents that your British Swim School has come up with. We do. We want parents to pledge parental supervision mainly. We want them to pledge lots of different ways of keeping their children safe, keeping um, them in swimming lessons year round so they don't forget, mm -hmm. so that when May comes along, the children have forgotten and, and lost the skill. So there's many, many ways we want to make parents be aware of, of this being the month, but it is a year round uh, skill that the children need to hone in them. Okay, now let's elaborate on the absolute necessity of water skills and safety for infants and toddlers. Well, as you know, Vince, that this, this world we live in now, uh, we do more vacations, we have lots more trips, and babies and toddlers, as soon as they can move, as soon as they can crawl, are very, very uh, apt to get to be attracted to water. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, very, very sad how many children either lose their lives or are terribly injured. And we can prevent this. We cannot replace parental guidance mm -hmm. and observation but we can with the correct teaching give little ones a very added very good added layer of protection now as you're talking about little ones as we were talking earlier you start your school I believe you said starting off with maybe five-year-olds then you scale back to three-year-olds but you said even younger now so let's talk about even a toddler and even show us and demonstrate a little bit with what you mean by toddlers oh, and absolutely. the importance of this young to be able to do this yes what we teach our babies is a reaction, a muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And what happens when a baby or a toddler or even an adult fall into water, the natural way for a child or any, any person in water is that they come up, but they also then go face forward, which is why they call drowning the silent killer. Mm -hmm. Faces in the water, and it's really difficult for them to lift their face and their head out of the water. Yes. Tension plus head weight and body weight. With a baby or a toddler or any new swimmer, what we teach is as they come up that first time, there is a reaction on a turning over so that the face, the mouth, and the nose are out of the water. Mm -hmm. That allows them at least one big cry or one big call for help, which statistics do prove that children particularly are never far away from some adult but the fact is the adult's not able to hear them if they're face down. This allows them to be heard. And as we were just showing there, so you can teach this to even an infant, the reaction or oh, the natural absolutely. to do. So if they fall in face first, I mean, you can teach a skill that just allows them to flip themselves even yes. at this young of an yes, age. Yes, you can. It takes gentle teaching. It's done through fun. Mm -hmm. But it works. We see it. We know it. And we hear wonderful stories almost every week of the year about how it worked and how a child has been saved or saved from possible injury. Mm -hmm. uh, parents, as I said before, are never far away or guardians. And that ability to go onto the back makes an enormous difference. Wow. And let's talk about that. One of the things we were talking about, and this might be fall into the tips that parents need to understand, is the fact of watching guardians close by and you were talking about a, a, um, a skill that you have or something you're implementing now about the pool guardian. Well the pool guardian has um, the responsibility of, wa of watching the pool. What we do at British Swim School is we have something called a water watcher and it's a lanyard with a, a, a 
a badge, basically. And if I were to give this to you, and we're at a party around a pool, mm -hmm. you are basically the designated driver, the designated water watcher. Okay. Now, you want to go to the bathroom. You don't leave, you hand this on to the next person. Mm -hmm. And that person has the total responsibility now for watching the pool. I cannot stress enough how that would save lives. Because you're right, so often that people are saying, oh, I thought you were watching, Correct. or I thought you were watching, Correct. and then po both people yeah. get distracted. Yeah. But if you're wearing the lanyard, yeah. then you have a reminder, yeah. and you know somebody has been given the specific responsibility yeah. of watching the And babies. it works around pools, it works at the beach, it works in, in um, if you're by a lake or a river. That person has that responsibility, and it's a big one. But, you know, it's, it's a great way of knowing it's your turn. <laughs> All right, Rita, let's talk about, let's give the five top water safety tips to um, keep an eye and save the little ones. Let's yeah. go down the list for that. Well, of course, excuse me, <coughs> of course, parental guidance, as I've said, is, is, is vital. Um, you know, we're all good parents. Drowning happened to parents who adore their children. One of the hardest things is everyone thinks, I love my children, it cannot happen to me. And it does. So mm -hmm. parental guidance, obviously, supervision. But we know that fails. We know yes. that the best parents in the world... The phone rings. Uh, Something phone, happens. Uh, you yeah, get distracted for just has. a moment. You turn your back. Correct. Yes, yes ma'am. So swimming lessons, in my opinion, is to me the next most important thing. If it gives you 10 seconds when that child gives one cry in the water, that to me has to be the second most important thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I will always suggest that we do that. Followed by, of course, the protection of alarms and gates and, and um, uh, not putting toys around a pool. Very often toys around a pool, a little one throws a ball in and goes after it. Mm -hmm. A bike falls in often with the child on t on the bike. Mm -hmm. now, those are the main things. So try not to have too many toys, and only when you're there. Try. But to along have with the not toys near it, you need your rescue tools, though. You, you need do need to have those near. Always and a telephone. That's a really good thing to have handy. God forbid there is an accident, or God forbid there's a child that, that's somewhere else hurt itself, and you can't leave the pool. Those are other ways of, of, of securing safety. There are many, but mm -hmm. those are the top ones. And then let's talk about, obviously, people to get this sense of uh, security or maybe false sense of security from all the things you can buy at the store, the floaties, the things you like know. that. And they're easily removed, and children don't like to walk around a pool wearing <laughs> any kind of floaty. And, then, and we have a specific one for British Swim School, mm -hmm. but this is particularly small and fits tightly around the child. But again, this is used for play when a parent is there or a swim teacher is there. But children remove them, so mm -hmm. do not think because you've got your child around the outside of a pool with a pair of armbands or a floaty that that's a safety factor. It's not. Okay, and as we're talking about all of these safety um, ideas and things that you can do here, which are very good advice, especially the teaching of the child. Now, this is the British Swim School, and we hear the accent, but this is going to be coming to Atlanta. I, it's, I'm from Brooklyn, did I not? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, it yes, is. We're very, very excited. We have major contracts with, um, with fitness centers, and we use their pools, and we're about to open in the next two months, we hope, mm -hmm. in Atlanta in many areas, and we're really excited about it because any amount of teaching, the more people that will join us, the more people that will, will actually become franchisees too. We're looking for franchisees, so if we have anybody out there who wants to become a major swim school owner, please contact us on our website. But yes, we are opening in Atlanta. All right, excellent. So that way we'll be able to teach these little ones how to stay safe in the yeah. water. Thank yeah. you very much, Rita, for being oh, with us. Oh, it's my appreciate pleasure. It very Thank much. you. All right, British Swim School website is there. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, ways to stay cool and dry this summer. The procedures that help with excessive sweating and other skin conditions after the break.